So, yeah, I'm sitting down tonight, by the way. We're just having an informal parlay. So I wasn't feeling well, decided to sit and just talk to everybody tonight. Um, the most important thing that people can do is contact the government in advance of any problems and let them know that you're actually the one piloting the ship. This is my, this is my deal. Um, this is my vessel, the whole nine yards. We were just talking about this off camera and obviously if you want to contact the government with, with any kind of an agreement, you're going to want to contact the head of the legal department. Every corporation has one. With a province, it's the attorney general. So you, that's where people should be, should, should have been sending their new cores, their understandings of intent, whatever they're going to send, a fee schedule, it goes to the attorney general because he's head of the law department. He's the minister responsible for all the other lawyers that work for the province. So he'd be the top guy to contact. And then we got off topic on that as well again about how uh, at the, the top of your document you're going to want to put on there certain things like every word in this document can be found in Black's Law Dictionary because those are the meanings of the terms that I'm using. So when I'm dealing with you people, I'm only using the terms, the, mean, the, the definitions of the words that are in Black's Law Dictionary. If you guys don't like that, then you know, you're welcome to get back to me and say, no, no, we use the definitions of the words that are in the Interpretation Act of Canada. And you say, well, no, I'm sorry, I have to go by that. That's your act. You know, I guess there's no, uh, there's no agreement here. We, 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 sounds like we just really should be doing discipline on her, so, um, so, so fuck you. Don't do business with me. And that's great. And that's where we got into the topic just a few minutes ago about it's great if the, if the government doesn't want to do business with you no more. Because what I just said a few minutes ago was we can always go do other things. I can go grow food. I can go work. I can do anything. I can do all the things I normally do without interference from them. Government is the one that is fucked without us. They're just a bunch of assholes in suits in a building that don't produce anything. They require us to contract with them to make money, to gain a livelihood, to do anything. And they're all just agents of the banks anyways, right? So the, the, all these people that produce nothing but paperwork, they need us. We don't need them. That's the position of strength we come in in commerce. Because we'll just go do something else and still be productive. And they're still doing nothing productive. And we'll see how long they can make paper. So and that's what I mentioned, because uh, I got to... Uh, one accomplice on the other side of the country here, and he's real big on the Bible stuff, and that's why I know that's where the story of Abel and Cain comes in, where, you know, as soon as the ground wouldn't, pro wouldn't produce for Cain any longer, first thing he did is went and built a city. So he could get the rest of us suckers to do all the work for him, right? That's, that's exactly what's going on, period. So, and actually, on that, uh, one of the things I realized last time, uh, or, or even recently after I was seeing a lot of the comments online, is that I can draw as many things as I want on the board and try to address specific things but people really start, they're still not understanding what's going on. I think I had one question online there that somebody was like, they're like, you know, you guys have it pretty good in Canada and this and that. I don't see what what, you're, what point you're trying to make. And it's like, what point? I'm like, oh, okay, like, because I'm being beaten less than that guy, I should be thankful for what I've got kind of idea. And I was like, well, well, no. And so that kind of led me to believe that maybe people just don't really understand what our motivation is. And even a lot of the people here and the watching stuff online, they don't know what their own motivation for doing something is. What do, what, like, you don't do anything unless you want something out of what you're doing. The end result. What is it you're going to be striving to do, right? A lot of us just want to be left alone, right? Obviously, we still want things like health care. Uh, like, I want to know when I go to the hospital, I can get stitched up because, I mean, obviously, I've had required those services in the past. Uh, uh, very, very, very minor government services. I mean, roads, uh, but we pay for those with gasoline taxes. So really the question comes down, well, what do you want out of all this? Um, but that's, that's a question everybody asks themselves, by the way, too. Is what, what's the end result of where you want to go? Do you want to be just somebody who lives in a house out in a, uh, an acreage uh, with, with solar panels and you just don't look at other human beings? Uh, I mean, no, that's not my goal. Um, yeah, it is for a few people, <laughs> or just you know, just your, the, the the life we all have in a city right now, um, just without the controls of government. And people don't understand that, you know, you can you can give a human being everything they need. You can give them food. You can give them uh, air, like everything they need to actually just to live. But the less control somebody has over their own life, that's what makes people act out. It's like uh, the experiments they used to do with with mice when they put mice in cages and they give them everything the mouse needs. But the, 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 the ability, every time they took the ability of the mouse to control anything that was going on in the environment away, that's when it became angry and struck out, even though it's obviously it's getting all the food it needs, it's not going to die, 
right? And then, you know, that's kind of what's happening to us right now is the government saying, oh, hey, you don't know, no, you don't have to worry about anything. We'll always make sure you got uh, a roof over your head, you know, even if it's just a, a tent down at the shelter, and you'll always get some food, some gruel from our stoves, and all you got to do is work and give us all your money, you know, and then the odd time they lift up the mouse cage and they just poke you for no reason. That's the cops doing that. They'll just open it up and say, oh, look at that little fucking thing. Just give you a puck couple of pokes and throw you in jail, right? It, it's not enough just to be alive. So my short quest answer to one of the responses I got online is, what do you hope to gain out of this? It's not enough just to be alive. So I don't want to be just a, uh, a food consuming device that has no control over my own life, period. So that's my motivation. Everybody else can figure out what theirs is. Um, nobody's reading. I talked about this in another video. I went back through some of my files from over the years, just the stuff that I started with and I went through and I, I keep everything. I, I'm a paperwork hoarder. I even kept, I think I told you guys, I, I took notes and I wrote stuff while I was in prison the last time. I kept all those and I had to put a title page, notes from prison. So I've got everything I wrote last time I was in jail. Um, so I like proving things that I say when I'm online too, by the way here too. So some of the notes I started taking about all the stuff I was going to do in court and letters I was going to write while I was in jail is on the back of a Webpig remand requisition form. So, <laughs> so that's, I think I told people that I was getting the requisition forms and I would just get a little pencil and I would start writing all my shit in the back of it while I was in jail. So I kept all that and I got pages of it because you got nothing else to do while you're in there. That's probably what, uh, what's the creditors of Gordon Hall? That's probably why Gordon Hall got so smart. I mean, I think he spent, what, nine, nine years in jail writing on the back of requisition forms and figuring out what he did wrong. So I guess I, I must have got it. That guy. Yeah, I guess he must have got it right, finally. Okay, so I got all that kind of stuff. But anyways, um, somebody else sent me a panicked message to, telling me that they went to go find the Constitution Act or the Winnipeg, or the, sorry, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And that like in section 52 and 32 were gone. Like they're trying to cover this up all of a sudden. I don't know, what the hell? So I went and looked it up. I got my copy from years and years and years ago that I printed up. And I went and looked it up, the one on Canley, just <coughs> They're still the same. They can't change the Charter of Rights and Freedoms to try to hide, hide stuff. <laughs> section 32 and Section 52 are there for everybody to read. I brought these up before in previous videos. I've just got one copy online. Yeah. No section missing. Okay, that's interesting. Did you go to Canley? Somebody uh, said that those sections are missing. Site? Okay, well, anyways, the copy that I've got under Section 32 says this charter applies to the Parliament and Government of Canada, Canada in respect of all matters within the authority of Parliament, including all matters related to the Yukon Territory and Northwest Territories, and to the legislature and government of each province in respect of all matters within the authority of the legislature of each province. Hmm. Okay, well that's not rocket science. It says this charter applies to anything that the government's got authority over, which is their own business. Okay, well that was section 32. Then we skip real quick. Um, by the way, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms ends at 32. There's a reason for that. Because the, it's part of a bigger act called the Constitution Act. This is for Canada, for all you people out there. The Constitution Act was actually passed in the UK. It was called the Canada Act. And Section 52, where it goes on, if you have the full act, goes on to say that the Constitution of Canada is the supreme law of Canada and any law that is inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution is to the extent of the inconsistency of no force or effect. Okay, so what that tells you, this is the Supreme Law, period. And the Supreme Law, period, just told you in Section 32 that it only applies to government. So you don't really need to go much beyond this act right here. Just download a copy and, and read it. It's, it's, it's nine minutes of an episode of Friends. If you've watched an episode of Friends and you haven't read the Constitution Act, don't ever message me online bitching about anything. It's right here. Read it. Because I think uh, one of the rants we got here that I read just before class actually was somebody saying that uh, it went off on a deluge of things about I don't even know what. And they're quoting all sorts of parts of Acts and everything. That, that's great. Somebody's actually read through this stuff. But the point they should have got was that none of this stuff applies to us. Right? An act only applies to you if you contract with the government through that act. And nothing in the, in the Criminal Code of Canada applies if it doesn't have an act to give force and effect in the first place. So that's what a little reading will tell you. Um, so beyond that, 
I just want to spend time reading a couple of things that I know I've brought up in past classes here. Uh, things like, well, I've said before, and this is one of the premises for saying, well, you know, can you prove I, I uh, perform the function of government? And why this argument is so important? Because you go to a little thing called the Canada Evidence Act, right? And unless you've read this, you should not be going to court as well, period. It's called the Canada Evidence Act. What is evidence? That's kind of important if someone's bringing a charge against you and you want to play in their game. So you read through the Evidence Act, and most of it's nonsense and just common sense. If you're an employee of a corporation, that's a good guideline. But then you go into the definition section here, section 12, uh, and you look up the word business. And I think I've touched on this before. So. The government of Canada obviously has authority over its own business, or over they well, they just say just business period, right? Oh, it has oh over commerce. We got we got jurisdiction over commerce, right? Well, and business is the same thing, so it's their business. The definition of business in their own act, look it up, Canada Evidence Act definition of business. It's really easy to find. None of the stuff's hidden. Business means. Any business, profession, trade, calling, manufacture, or undertaking of any kind carried on in Canada or elsewhere, whether for profit or otherwise, including any activity or operation carried out on or performed in Canada or elsewhere by any government, by any department, by any blah, 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 goes on. And then it finishes off in an interesting way. Um, it finishes by saying performing a function of government. So that's their definition of business. So anything that they have authority over, anything that they're conducting business as, um, is something performing a function of government, and that's just right in their own act. That was the Interpretation Act? No, this is the Canada Evidence Act. Okay. The Interpretation Act is another one altogether, and I've got that here, because years ago I went through and I read through every single one of their acts. I read everything, I read them over again. I read the Criminal Code three times. Um, and it was then that I realized that it's, it's irrelevant, it's nonsense. Even if it is the laws my adversaries are using, I don't, they're not my adversary. I don't want to fight them. I may want to do business with them in certain capacities, and I may not want to do business with them, right? But it's pointless to learn all their shit, because it's just that, it's their shit. And it even says in their own acts, it's their own shit. <laughs> Period, it only applies to you if you decide to perform a function of government to contract with them to be paid to receive remuneration for doing a service of government. And that means if there was a gravel company out there called Canada, and they had this wonderful little charter and all these laws and a criminal code of Canada for that gravel company, for all the employees that work there, and you just owned your own truck and you were out in the highways one day and they pulled you over, okay, well, unless you're hauling gravel for them, None of their shit applies to you, period. But if you've got Canada Gravel Company on the side of your truck and you're hauling a load for them and you're breaching one of their mandates of their corporation, then you're going to summary convictions court. The problem is the government has spent a lot of years, a lot of money on a bullshit education. Sorry, schooling. It's not an education, it's schooling. Fish school, you're all taught the same way, to think the same way, swim the same way, everything the same way and to be as dumb as humanly possible. Um, we've been led to believe that everything that's commerce is the government. Like we can't even conduct commerce without the government involved in our lives, and that's just horseshit. So um, the Interpretation Act, there's so many things in the Interpretation Act, and again, if people haven't read this, if you wanna know what Canada is even, well, it's in the Interpretation Act. It's very simple. In fact, there's one line under general definitions for Canada, for, for greater clarity, sorry, for greater certainty, includes the internal waters of Canada and the territorial sea of Canada. There's even old maps that still exist for, for Canada where it's just got the highlighted areas of some of the internal waterways and the territorial seas. That is all Canada is. It's not a landmass. It's not a country. It's a nation, right? It's right here in their own definition. So when people say, oh, that just, that just means it includes, like as in on top of all the land. Well, then just go look up the definition of the word includes in Black's Law Dictionary. I'll tell you the word includes is an exclusionary term, right? The inclusion of one is the exclusion of all others. It's like me saying the basket contained...